New videos every day. I'm Janice Lee. I'm a licensed acupuncturist with the Texas State Board of Medical Examiners. And um, we have Amy here who is going to receive acupuncture for the first time. And I have assured her that there's nothing to be afraid of, that it doesn't hurt, and that acupuncture is only one way that we can access the human meridian system. So I think that Amy's ready. Uh, we have followed clean needle technique protocols and swab the area. I'm going to use a five needle protocol that was uh, designed by a French doctor that I have worked with for several years through palpatory diagnosis which would be the feeling of the radial pulse and feeling at different depths and areas for different qualities in the pulse on both sides is the main form of palpatory diagnosis that we use in oriental medicine. Now keep in mind that in oriental medicine um, it evolved for thousands of years without the ability to see inside the body in other ways like we have today with all of the uh, medical imaging devices that we have and things like that. Ways of seeing inside the body had to be developed and in fact were perfected. Uh, developed to very high levels and are still in use today in many parts of the world, including in the United States. Um, so the first thing that we do when you come in for an acupuncture treatment is to do a pulse assessment. Is that tender? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's tender. In case you're wondering about acupuncture, um, it doesn't exist by itself. It's only one of about eight branches of oriental medicine. So uh, herbal medicine is one that we, a lot of people are aware of. Asian bodywork therapy is another. It's somewhat like acupuncture without needles. But when we're using needles or acupressure, either one, we're referencing the human meridian system. This meridian system is like a super information highway system throughout our entire body. It allows for communication between the organs. It allows for communication from the organs to the surface of the body. It explains things like referred pain. It explains things like uh, phantom pain. What is the object of acupuncture? Uh, and acupressure as well. The object is to encourage the chi to move throughout the body and it moves along the meridians. This talk about chi and meridians, what is it? Chi is energy. You could also say that it's the life force that animates us. It's the difference between being alive and not being alive. It's what's, in a sense, looking out of our eyes or uh, activates all of our senses, our vision, our hearing, our sense of touch, taste, smell. Um, chi is everywhere. Anything that's alive has some kind of chi. And so we can cultivate chi. And it is said in the classics that we can invite the chi, that we can welcome the chi, but we cannot summon the chi. So in other words, we can't tell the chi what to do. We can't boss it around. We can't demand that it arrives at a certain point along the meridians. But we can do things to encourage the flow of chi. So that is what acupuncture is intended to do. The meridians flow throughout the body and they flow through the organ itself and in the process relay information. So it is a communication system. It works instantly, whereas say with food or herbs or drugs that utilize the biochemical pathways, which are more diffuse and less precise, things take longer. And oftentimes through the biochemical pathways, um, 
these substances require some kind of digestion. And in the absence of optimal digestion, very little of the substance, the food, the herb, the herbal medicine, or the drug may actually reach its target. So the object with the biochemical pathways is to sort of flood the area, as in the case with drugs. Now, with the um, bioelectrical pathways that we use in acupuncture, there's no going through all the digestive processes and all the chemical reactions that have to occur. It is, it happens at the speed of electricity. So, um, and there can be an awful lot of precision with that information that's conveyed along the meridians. Some people have asked me, well, how did people come up with this to begin with? And that's a very interesting question, which I, I can't say with any certainty, uh, at least at this point. But uh, we do know that the classic medical texts that refer to acupuncture and practices of oriental medicine go back at least 5,000 years. So what I discovered when I first started studying it was that these ancient texts referred to the immortal ones, and they referred to people who knew more than they did, who had come before them, the sages, the immortals, the um, superior people, more evolved people. Um, so that goes back fr pretty far in history, so we really don't know too much about it. I feel that we're lucky to know what we do know. And to have the opportunity to work with Qi and to work with the meridians has um, provided something that I will never be bored the rest of my life because the way things work in the human body when you begin to understand these things like the, the way Qi moves through the human meridian system, it's absolutely fascinating. And it explains so much about what we know, what little we know, um, and so much about what we could know about ourselves. So the meridian systems, the, the meridian system um, is common to all living things, although, of course, it's a little different in humans than it is in animals. Um, every species has their own meridian system. We know that it works very well on animals. Um, racehorses, for instance, uh, many racehorse owners wouldn't allow anybody but an acupuncturist to work on their horses. Um, so obviously with animals it's not a placebo effect. That's a given. Um, so we know that it works. We just don't completely understand how it works. There are well-delineated theories, and we trust in those, those of us that practice oriental medicine and practice acupuncture. And uh, on a daily basis in my clinic, I see what could be considered miracles, or would be considered miracles in many cases by Western medicine. But it's pretty routine. The chi moves, things rectify themselves. The chi commands the blood, so when the chi moves, the blood follows. A lot of times when you have, or almost always we say in Chinese medicine, that when the chi and the blood do not move, you have pain. So we move the chi and we move the blood as a result to eliminate pain. So any kind of pain syndrome uh, understood from that point of view is quite treatable. Before I put the last needle in your foot, Amy, we checked this point to see if it was tender. And you told me that it was. It was very tender. And now I'm pushing as hard as I can. And what are you experiencing? Normal. Normal. You're not? OK. She's not wincing. So, um, so that worked that created a circuit that facilitated balance in the body and that was the goal. That's one indication, there are other indications. So another example of the movement of chi in the body that you probably will understand very well if you've ever had a headache is that the, uh, in a headache 
there's a concentration of energy on the head where it's not flowing through the body from the hands to the feet as it's supposed to. So that's when you get pain. And so to facilitate the movement of chi away from the head, especially the yang chi, I would work on someone's feet. So acupuncture points on the feet are very good for headaches. And I generally would avoid the head. There's a saying, we don't beat up on a crying baby. So where there's pain, you don't want to add more energy to that. Um, So that's an example of something that we can treat very well in Oriental medicine. um, That in Western medicine, uh, you know if you've ever had a headache that you take a pill. So we prefer, when possible, it's always better to treat the cause, the root of the problem, rather than just trying to throw something at the symptoms, although we want to treat the symptoms too to relieve the pain. So it, it's I, ideally we want to work with the meridian system because that will treat the root of the problem. So if you have questions about anything that we've covered in this video, please leave me a comment um, so I know what to cover in the next one. In upcoming videos, we're going to do an overview of all the eight branches of Oriental Medicine. And um, I really appreciate your watching, so thank you. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.